Hello everyone, this is Miss Dolney again. Welcome to homework number two. Don't forget you should be doing Cornell notes on this, um, just as we've done on homework number one. So for homework number two, your title is right here. I know, fancy, huh? Um, it's types of cells, and it's going to be due Wednesday, September 3rd in class. Um, your essential question is here. What are the similarities and differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells? So um, keep this in mind as we're going through this, um, and as you're taking your notes, that your goal is to understand well how are prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells similar, and how are they different? So today in class, we talked about what is a cell, right? We talked about where cells came from, the cell theory, um, and we discussed how the cells are the basic unit of life. And I think we got even probably deeper in that um, and talked about how cells um, are designed for their functions and what their jobs are. And so you can just look simply at these cells um, that are here on the screen and just obviously from the way they look that they must have different things going on. They must be doing different jobs um, to support life. And speaking of supporting life, this right here is an egg cell with um, the competing sperm cells surrounding it. So we'll get to that more later. Okay, so if you remember from your essential question, one of the parts of this question was how are prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells similar? So how are these cells all the same? Well, this is um, some of the characteristics that are in all cells. So here you're looking at your similarities. Okay. So one thing that all cells have in common is they have a plasma membrane or a cell membrane. Okay, A plasma membrane is a boundary that controls what enters and leaves the cell. So right here is an example of your plasma membrane. Okay, There's a lot going on here. Um, this is the inside of the cell and this is the outside of the cell. Um, so we'll discuss more in depth in a few days on how the cell actually regulates or controls what goes in and what goes out. Um, that's a really important process in all cells. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that. Okay, so something else that all cells have in common is they have some sort of genetic material. So most of the time, our genetic material we're going to talk about is DNA, but there are times where it is something called RNA. Um, we're going to spend weeks on DNA and even RNA, um, but this little thing over here that kind of looks like a nerd rope, the candy, that is a um, computer animation of DNA. Okay, so DNA is what makes up um, who you are, who other living things are, um, and what their characteristics are. It determines those things about them. And so um, really important stuff. And again, like I said, we'll talk about that later in the year. Another thing that all cells have in common are ribosomes. Ribosomes are um, a specialized structure within the cell. Um, they have a very specific job, and that job or function is to make proteins. Um, and proteins are going to decide um, what an organism um, is all about, really, and for example, your eye color is determined by proteins that are made by DNA in your ribosomes. And so that is a huge, long process, and we're going to talk about that also in a few months. Um, so I'm sure you're just so excited for that. And then the last thing that cells do um, is break down materials for energy, or we call this metabolism. So if you just think about you when you eat food, you break down food, you have um, you go through metabolism, you metabolize um, those things, and so um, you break food down to get energy. And so all cells are going to do the exact same thing. Okay, so as we start to talk about our two groups of cells, um, scientists divided cells into two categories based on their internal structure, so the things that are inside of them, okay? Um, and the one determining factor that really made scientists decide if a cell goes in one category or the other is if it has a nucleus. So the presence of a nucleus, um, and we're going to talk about what that is in just a minute, um, really decides what category a cell is grouped into. And so one of the categories you can see here is called eukaryotes. Um, so we're going to talk about those. And then the second one is called prokaryotes. Um, and so again, we'll just be talking about how these are different and how they're similar um, is what we just discussed. Okie dokie. Um, eukaryotic cells, let's start there. So the first big group of cells we're going to talk about are the eukaryotes. Um, these cells do contain a nucleus. 
Um, again, we'll talk about that in just a second. And they also have internal structured called organelles. Um, and we'll talk about what those are in a minute. So organisms with eukaryotic cells are called eukaryotes, just so we're clear on the terminology. Um, and like I said, they contain a nucleus. Well, the nucleus is a organelle um, in the center of a cell. So we need to talk about what an organelle is first before we can really um, break into the nucleus. So an organelle um, is what we like to call a little organ, okay? A little organ. And um, if you think about the organs in your body, all organs have a job, right? So heart um, has a job. The lungs have a job. Um, and all of their jobs are different from any other organ, um, and so they're all important and all essential in our bodies. Well, cells are the exact same way. Um, they have little organs or little organelles um, all throughout their um, internal structures, okay? So in a eukaryotic cell, we're going to have um, many organelles, and each of them has a specific job. So whether it's disposing of waste, whether it's breaking down food, whether it's making proteins, um, anything like that, all of these organelles have very specific jobs or functions. So now looking back at our nucleus, okay, um, the nucleus is a central organelle, so a little organ in the center of the cell that contains the genetic material. And so it's kind of the safe house for the DNA or RNA um, in a eukaryote. And so the nucleus is really important because the DNA is so important. Um, and so in a few months, we're going to talk about exactly how DNA is so important and how it does what it does in the cell. Um, but just for right now, know that the nucleus holds or contains the DNA um, in a eukaryotic cell, which is what makes it so important. Another thing we need to know about eukaryo um, eukaryotic cells is that they are large and more complex. So if you look at this, um, which we'll talk about the opposite in just a second, but if you notice, inside the cell, there's a lot going on. Um, this right here is its nucleus, okay? And then it's got all of these other little organelles that are finishing their jobs and, and making things for the cell. I mean, there's a lot going on. Um, you can even see their names listed right around here, okay? There's just so much in the cell. Um, they're like little bodies, like little human bodies. There's just so much happening in them. And I think a lot of times we assume that they're dull and plain and they're just really simple, um, but they have a lot happening in them and it's all happening at one time. And on top of that, it's happening in every single cell in your body, for example. Um, and so these things are really complex, um, even though they're, they're relatively so small to us. So eukaryotes or um, organisms with eukaryotic cells can be unicellular or multicellular. Um, we heard about this in, in uh, homework number one. Um, uni means one, kind of like the word uno. Okay, so a unicellular organism is one-celled. And a multicellular organism has multiple cells. Um, kind of like the word multiple or multiply. Multi means many. Okay. So some examples of organisms that have um, eukaryotic cells are animals, which, yes, that includes humans, um, plants of all kinds, fungi, which is like our fungus, like mushrooms and things like that, um, and then protists, which is a interesting and confusing category of organisms, um, but you might have heard of things like paramecium, amoebae, those are um, protists. So eukaryotic cells, major thing you need to know is that it's got a nucleus, it has organelles, um, and then it's large and in charge. It's uh, more complex. All right, so we talked about our eukaryotic cells, and now the other group we need to talk about are prokaryotic cells. So unlike a eukaryotic cell, prokaryotes have no specialized structure. So if you just glance over the slide, you're going to notice there's no nucleus, there's no organelles. There's nothing inside of a prokaryotic cell um, that's really like a eukaryote. Okay, so it's just like eukaryotes, an organism with prokaryotic cells is called a prokaryote. Um, many prokaryotes are unicellular, so most of them only have one cell. Um, that's their whole being. Um, they're very small in size, and they're very simple. So if you look at this guy over here, okay, there may seem to be a lot in him, um, but there's really only three things on the inside of him. There's cytoplasm, which is really just like jelly that fills up the cell, if you will. Um, 
nucleoid, which is our DNA um, or RNA, depending on the on the on the species. Okay, um, and then we've got our ribosomes. So as we noticed at the beginning, okay, um, ribosomes are were in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So they do have those little guys, but that's about it. Um, so if you'll notice, the DNA in a prokaryote just floats around. That's what this blue stuff is right here. It just floats around in the cell. It doesn't have a nucleus that it sits in anymore. Um, it just has a free-floating DNA that just kind of floats all around. Um, so the examples for prokaryotic cells is very simple because it's just one thing. It's bacteria. So this is one of those things um, that when you hear prokaryote, you've got to think bacteria. Prokaryote, bacteria, prokaryote, bacteria. Um, I know my classes will know I make them sit there and chant that to themselves. I'm sure they appreciate that. So if that helps you, just keep repeating that to yourself and remember that prokaryotes are bacteria. Um, and then eukaryotes are everything else, um, which we'll talk about more as the year goes on. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Um, you've reached, you know, the, the essential question again. And um, make sure that you think about this right here, that if you can't answer this question, um, you need to go back and rewatch this video or think about your coronal notes and review them. Um, you need to be able to talk about the similarities, how all cells are the same, and how all cells have some differences and what are those differences, okay? So um, be sure to review this. Um, ask your teacher if you have questions. Um, and make sure that you complete your summary on your Cornell notes. Um, you can basically just answer this question, and that would be a great review um, and an awesome summary.